Hello, I'm Jeremy Fenske, and I'm here with the video process of a recent fan painting I did called Link in the Forest Temple. In celebration of the new game Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, I wanted to make an image that portrays the look and feel of the game, but also adds one of my personal biggest influences, Studio Ghibli's background art. I had such a great response from this image, and so I wanted to share my process as well as the steps that it took for me to get there. So the very first thing I did was start with some really quick black and white sketches, just keeping everything on one layer, really only thinking about the major composition and the lighting. Uh, I, I kind of saw something nice in here where I wanted to make a scene where you're in the woods and there's a cathedral that is that looks like it's so ancient that it's sunken into the ground. And uh, yeah, I wanted to get that, that uh, storytelling in at a very early stage. It's important to get a good understanding of like what you're painting at a very early stage. Um, yeah, again, keeping things at one layer, I added a figure on a second layer here just to really get that placement down and I want the horse to do something, right? I want it to um, be a part of the story and be a part of the environment. Um, the next step is I start adding some color in there. I'm using an overlay layer just and just keeping my values at 50% so that I don't uh, interrupt any of the values that I have in the layers underneath. Um, again, keeping everything flat, you know, relatively simple. Uh, when I'm done with the overlays, I actually start to paint over top with a normal layer. And here I'm just, you know, because sometimes the overlay doesn't really get quite the saturation and the hue that you're looking for, or the temperature shift that you're looking for. So you're more than likely going to have to paint over it with a normal layer. Again, just adding in some of the different light sources, reflected light, fill light from above, the direct light source from the sun, and, and then also figuring out the local color of uh, the river or creek, uh, the grass, and some of the main elements of the painting. So now I'm taking my flattened image and I'm actually meticulously selecting and cutting out each individual element in the painting and separating it on its own layer. Um, I just find that this is so much easier than trying to come up with an idea and trying to come up with a value uh, composition and sketch and maintain layers. I'm always really bad at doing that. I like to paint things as flat as possible at the start because at the start because it's easier for me to think of the image as being flat and it makes the image more workable and malleable so I can get my idea down without having to worry about layers and messing things up for myself later on in the painting. At this stage, uh, I'm going through those layers. I'm doing a bit of cleaning up, um, making each layer, uh, like the cathedral back there, cutting out all the parts that aren't necessary, like, like Link there and, and some of the trees. I just want the cathedral just to be the cathedral, and that's it. Um, and on the cathedral, it's very, very important that uh, this is going to be the anchor of the image, so it's very important that this looks right and that it's structurally sound and, and that it makes sense as architectural piece. Next what I'm doing is adding in some foliage and some overgrowth, some moss, uh, again really to help it make it feel ancient and overgrown and that it's been sitting in this forest for hundreds of years. And then, of course, there's the iconic Triforce symbol. And just adding in some little fine details. You know, I, this this piece really needs to sell the cathedral look because you're not seeing all of it at once. You're only seeing a fraction of it. Now, what I'm doing is adding in some ambient shadows, so I'm just using the lasso tool to select some hard edges and then putting in real soft ambient shadows. It just makes it feel three-dimensional, believable, uh, and, and makes the volume sell really well. Um, after adding some really bright lighting with some color dodge and soft brushes, I'm confident with the cathedral and I'm moving on to the character, uh, adding in some details. Uh, Still keeping it loose, like I, I still keep it pretty far zoomed back. I don't zoom in that close. I still use, you know, a fairly large brush and just simply down, simply paint down the local colors and in the in the basic shapes of the character. Uh, not trying to get too much into detail, but um, now that I have that cathedral in there and it's looking good, I, I feel better about 
adding in a little bit more detail. Here I'm playing with some field blur. So just blurring blurring back the background a little bit kind of brings the character more in focus and a little bit sharper. With some of that lighting information, I'm going in and actually painting a little bit more detail on Link. Here comes the reflection, very simply done, just by copying it and you know doing the old trick of copying it and flipping it to, to get that solid reflection down. It's always fun to paint water with all the little highlights and bits of reflection and think about where the light is coming from. Here I'm actually creating a new brush because I don't quite have the, the the graphic shape that I want to paint some of this grass in the foreground. So I'm just making a new brush that helps solve that problem. And I highly recommend you guys to, to do that. You know, if you're, you get stuck and you don't quite, you're not quite putting the mark down that you want, just make a new brush. It works really well. Adding in the foreground, um, adding in some of those details. I have some brushes that just work instantly for making it feel like leaves and foliage in the foreground. Now I'm thinking about some of the other focal points now that I have the cathedral and link blocked in there really nicely. I'm thinking about the, uh, these uh, these ancient remnants that are sitting in the forest like this uh, column that's been broken apart and overgrown as well as on the other side the, the guardian, the ancient guardian that's now overgrown and, and disassembled. So, um, you know, it's important for me to detail these moments a little bit more. Um, typically, I'll detail like, my focal points a lot more and then just some of the moments on the outer edge of the painting, I just let go or don't worry about detailing as much because it's not as important. As long as it reads, that's fine. And now I'm adding in some more details on LinkedIn. Epona and just really loose, kind of um, uh, using a brushier brush, like a little bit more bristly, just to kind of get some uh, some style in there, as well as some of the lighting suggestion. And I can think a little bit more about the different accessories he has on him, the armor he's wearing, um, the way the light is reflecting off each of those elements. And then the long-awaited reflection. I wanted to wait till I had the character and the horse done um, exactly where I wanted it because you know, once it's done and I put the reflection down, it's hard to kind of change the reflection on the fly. And here at the end of the painting, I'm just adding those last-minute details, uh, extra little branches and leaves uh, flying in the air. I really could spend many more hours just continue to paint more details you know this is kind of the fun part for me but I wanted to make sure that everything I put down is complementing the composition that I had set out early on in the painting and uh, everything is at a very nice high polish and that's it thank you so much for watching see you all next time